some of your language I found really interesting. You said that um, gravity knows its quantum states, it encodes its quantum states, it's solving a communication problem, a quantum communication problem, and so on. And what I find so interesting about yeah. this is that particularly with regard to the literature around ADS-CFT, gravity and space and time in the bulk are thought to emerge from the boundary theory. So they're not thought of as being fundamental. They're kind of not an active, playing an active role. They're a byproduct of what's going on on the exterior. I spoke with Eric Verlind about a year ago or so, and he doesn't even, I mean, I know this is a little bit different because we're getting back to black holes, but he doesn't even think of the interior of black holes as being real. He just thinks what's real is the exterior. And so it seemed like you have a somewhat different appraisal of the situation, or maybe I'm just reading into your language a little bit too literally. Uh, I, I guess what I won't get into is questions of, is the question of what, whether something is real. Uh, I think that's never been a fruitful question in science. Uh, the question is, what is an efficient description of our data? Um, but what we can ask is, uh, y you know, to what extent do we think some property is emergent as opposed to fundamental? Uh, so, for example, the conductivity of a metal, I think we would say that's an emergent property. You have to have a lot of atoms before it makes sense to define that that property. But in that limit where you have infinitely many atoms or molecules, uh, that property now becomes a well-defined object. No, but you wouldn't expect it to show up in the fundamental description of nature. I get the, um, the space and time clearly seem to have that property, that they're emergent in a certain sense. So <coughs> the case where we know how to make this most precise is, again, in the ADS-CFT correspondence setting, where we have a specific theory. And that theory has some dials. Uh, like I can, I can dial how basically how many degrees of freedom I have in the theory. And as I dial that number down, the interpretation in terms of the space-time uh, disappears. So if, if that number is large, then there, the theory on the boundary, this conformal field theory, is always the fundamental theory. It's always the one that I can ask all of the questions and that will get them right. But when the number of degrees of freedom are large, then there exists a good approximate description that I would describe as a gravitating space-time. Uh, and it's in that sense that we think of this as being a quantum theory of gravity. It contains that limit of a classical theory of gravity in it. If I turn the dial so that the number of degrees of freedom becomes small, then that, that alternative classical gravity theory just becomes completely inaccurate. It's not a good description at all. And so in that sense, I can make space-time appear or disappear by, di by turning that dial, right? So, so in that, it's clear that it's not, yeah, I can really interpolate between situations where space-time is a good description and space -time, where, where it's just not at all a useful description. Um, I think that, that is clear. Um, what I think what we've also learned, especially in recent years, is that much of this structure that we understood through the lens of ADS-CFT is actually far more general. Um, the idea that gravity is like a quantum error correcting code, that there's a certain sense in which you can recover larger regions from more boundary-like smaller ones. That's something that in recent years, for example, Jeff Pennington and I have made that very precise, that seems to work in arbitrary space-times. It's not tied to ADS, even though that's the context in which it was first discovered. Um, so that makes me optimistic uh, that these, you know, this is like the, the two senses in which holography is used, right? There's the sort of original, very broad set of ideas, oh, information and geometry are somehow tied together. And then there's the ADS-CFT correspondence, which was a beautiful, complete theory in which you could study things in far more detail. Uh, but on this original sort of side, that side has become much richer, thanks in part to interactions with this ADS-CFT correspondence. It's not just, you know, my entropy bound that lives on that side. It's, it's also the notion that the way the information is encoded is quantum error correcting, that it uses these funny single-shot quantum communication protocols. And so all of that stuff is actually quite general. And, and uh, it, 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 it leaves me optimistic that we will be able to go beyond ADS-CFT 
and understand how quantum gravity works in, in the real world. <laughs>